Hello everyone, how do you do? This is Project How To Do. Today we are going to take a look at Artillery Hornet 3D Printer. It has some interesting feature and uh, beautiful design. Let's start with unpacking. The printer is protected from all sides by foam rubber. It's disassembled into two parts for transportation. Inside you will find the printer itself and uh, a nice zipper pack with tools and spare parts. Here is everything you need to build and maintain a 3D printer. There is no filament in the kit. It's actually not bad. It's better to immediately buy a good filament and configure the printer for it than to train on test 250 grams of filament. Before assembling, let's take a look at the inside of the printer. It's enough to unscrew a few bolts around the perimeter and snap off the protective casing. Here is a connector of power supply and the motherboard itself. It's 32 bits. The drivers are removable. I didn't find any markings, but I'm pretty sure it's TMC2208. Those are good and silent drivers. All contacts are well tightened and secured. Despite the sticker on the heating bed 220 volts, it's 24 volts, which is quite strange, but in fact it's much better in such a printer, because the wire going to the bed may accidentally come off and you will have a bare live wire. Let's already assemble the printer. For this we need to install x-axis frame on the base. The bolts have already been inserted and you just need to tighten them. The next stage is the installing of the print head. There are just three bolts. Next we connect print head with a loop in which along with the wire there are bolted tube to feeding the filament. This is a very interesting solution that looks much neater. We connect all the connectors, it's uh, almost impossible to miss here. The next step is to check the fit of the rollers. They should not hang out and should not be over tightened. Just fit with a little friction. The included key is used to adjust the rollers. When everything is set up, you can turn on the 2D printer. After turning on the printer, the first thing is to calibrate the height of the pad. There is a built-in program that runs from the printer's settings and passes several points. Adjustment is made by nuts under the table. Now let's see what is on SD card. The manual in PDF, the installation file of the Cura slicer. In the Hornet configuration folder you can find start and end text files with the code that you need to insert when adding the new printer to the slicer. I already have a Cura slicer installed Let's add a new printer. Add the printer that is not connected to the network, a custom printer triple F. Enter the name of the printer, add X white 220, Y white 220, Z high 250 mm. Heating bed on, insert the start and end code from the TXT files. In the extruder tab, the diameter of the material is 1.75 mm. Click next and that's it. The first thing I printed out was a test cube that was on as a SD card. In my opinion it turned out quite well. There are small ripples on the sides but in general nothing serious. Then I printed out this ways. It turned out very nice. There are small plastic sagging due to a weak cooling but again nothing serious. The next model is more complicated, a lizard, but here I don't see any defects. The model turned out perfectly. Let's go through the plus of this printer. Very simple assembly, only 7 bolts and several connectors and you can start printing. Very quiet operation of the printer. This is the quietest printer of all 3D printers I have. It is a little noisier than a usual computer system unit. An interesting solution is to combine the Bowden tube and the wires to the extruder, because there are no hanging wires, ties 
and other things, it looks super. Excellent coating on the heating bed. PTG and PLA sticks uh, very well. Cons. Connecting the printing head. Such a solution is not maintainable, and you should keep it in mind. Summing up the characteristics, this is an average printer. It prints well enough right off the box. I don't see any points in upgrading this printer somehow. It's good the way it is. If you are interested in constantly doing something with a 3D printer, putting new parts, refining something, I would recommend something like Ender 3. This printer is more suitable for those who want to get it out of the box and print immediately. Yes, not with the best quality, but quite sufficient for the most people. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. See you next time.